Well, I'm a small business owner and, and I've taken all of the advice and built my own little website. You know, websites are supposed to bring more customers to my business. But the website's been up for a while and frankly, I really don't know what it's doing for me. It doesn't seem to be bringing me any more phone calls. It doesn't seem to be bringing me any more customers. But I have no idea what to do next. I mean, I've, I've put it up there. I wish that there was a tool out there, something that I could use to see how many people are coming to my website, how long they're staying at my website, what they're looking at when they get to my website. If only there was a tool like that that would be so helpful so that I could learn how to make my website better if it's not what my customers need. If only, if only there was a tool like that. If only, if only, if only. Your website is the number one most important piece of advertising that you have. No matter what other type of advertising you do, whether it's radio ads or little ads in the newspaper, your website will do the best. The reason is, is everybody goes to your website once they've learned about your company to find out about you. They find about, out about your products or services, your hours, your skills and experience. Everybody comes to your website and then from there we'll decide whether or not they want to contact you to, to do business with your company. There is a tool that allows you to really understand how your customers are interacting with your website. This tool is called Web Analytics. Web Analytics is what this class is about and we are going to go over how you can see how your customers get to your website, what they do when they get to your website, how long they're on your website, and a lot of other very valuable information for you. So with web analytics, you really can get a, a, an understanding of what your customers are doing when they come to your website, and if you're not getting the phone calls, then you may be able to figure out why. Okay, so as we go into explaining web analytics, there are a couple of pieces of vocabulary we need to go over and that you need to understand before you really start poking into web analytics software. The first uh, one of these uh, glossary terms, I suppose, would be a bounce rate. What is bounce rate? Bounce rate is the percentage of people that come to your website and only look at one page. So they come to your website, they look at one page, and then they leave. So they see nothing else. So whether they come uh, directly, they know what your web address is and they come to your home page, or whether they come in through Google search and they, they come to some other page on your website, the bounce rate is a percentage of people that come to only one page on your website and then they leave. The next term is average time on site. Average time on site is between all the visitors that have come to your site, on average, how long do they stay? So, um, if, you know, if you have a thousand people come to your site and that they stay at, at, let's say, one minute each, then the average time is one minute. It really depends on time on, for time on site, um, what you have as a business or website as to what is good or what is bad. If you have a restaurant, you will have a lot of visitors coming to your site that simply want to know your hours of operation. So you may have a very, very low time on site because they just want to know when you're open. So they'll, they'll come to your website. If your hours of operation are on your homepage, they'll, they'll see, yes, you're open or no, you're not, and then they'll leave. So your average time on site might only be five seconds and that might be A-OK, -okay. that might be fine because you know, the only information they're looking for is your hours. It doesn't take very long to, to find your hours. Now for a website like mine that is a blog and has videos and all that kind of stuff, you want a longer time on site because the people actually have to read uh, what's there. So if I went and looked at my analytics software and I saw that the average time on site was five seconds, that would be horrendous for me because nobody can read a blog post in five seconds. So that means nobody's actually reading anything. So for me, I want my average time on site to be at the very least a minute because that means on average people are, are actually reading something on my site. So that, that's the, the time on site and, and why it's important. Then you have page views 
and page views per visit. So page views is every single time any one of your, your visitors goes to any page on your website that increments your page views by one. So if you have one visitor that looks at 100 pages on your website, then you'll have 100 uh, page views. You know, if you have three visitors and they go to a certain number of pages on your site, that, that all gets added up. And it's the total number of pages that all of your visitors have viewed. And so that's the total page views. Then there's the average page views per visit. What this is, is basically you take all your visitors, you know, how many pages they've seen, and then on average, how many pages do your visitors go to? So with me, I think my site is somewhere around an average of two pages per visit, which, which isn't too bad. That means on average, most people come to my site and then, then they click on a, a, a few things. And they look at a few different things. Depending, again, depending on what you're doing and what type of business you have, you may want a high number of average page of views per visit or a low number. It all really depends. The next thing is visitors and unique visitors. So you will see a number of visitors. The, the number of visitors is the total number of all visitors that have come to your site. So if one person comes to your site, let's say 10 times in a day, he will be counted 10 for 10 different visitor slots. So let's say you have 100 people that come to your site and then you have one person that comes to your site 10 times you'll have a total of 110 visitors in that total visitors um, number. So it doesn't matter how many uh, times somebody comes to your site, they'll be counted as a visitor each and every time they come to your site. Then you will have unique visitors. And what unique visitors is, is basically unique visitors. It's not the total. So if one person comes to your site 10 times, you will only be counted once, not, not 10 times or 20 times. So those are the, the basic uh, definitions that you need to know. Bounce rate, the time on site, page views, average page views per visit, total visitors, and then unique visitors. So web analytics are the reports that are created by web analytics software. So basically, web analytics are graphs, numbers, all the information that the web analytics software gives you. There are a lot of different types of web analytics software out there. Uh, there's Google Analytics, there's PWIC, there's WhatsApp, there's uh, different types of stats. Um, there, there's probably a hundred different types of web analytics software out there for you to use. If you don't know what to use yet, I would suggest you use Google Analytics. It's a very good piece of software and will probably do everything that you need. Um, if it ends up not doing everything you need, you should realize that there are, there are other pieces of software out there, so you may just have to, to find a different piece of software that you need to use. Um, web Analytics software comes in two different varieties for how quickly you can receive reports. There is real-time and, well, not real-time. Real-time analytics software, literally, you get reports that are up to the second um, updated. So I use a piece of software that uses, that has a map on it, and as people come to my site, within a second of they, them coming to my site, the little globe on the map spins around and I get a little pinpoint uh, location of where the person is coming from. So that is real, real time uh, monitoring. It'll show you as people come to your site, the reports are generated and you can see them right then and there. Other pieces of software like Google Analytics are not real time. It can take anywhere from four hours to 24 hours before you get the reports for, for what happened previously. So if I want to see what happened today and, and have everything be perfect, I would have to wait till tomorrow. I can't see the information in real time. So it's just something that, that you should realize. Now, all the, the web analytics software that you will be looking at, it should be free. There are two, two types of, of uh, web analytics software um, on the pay scale. There's either the free versions or there's the enterprise pay for versions. Everything that you should be looking at at this point in time, if you're watching this video, should be free. Whether you use Google Analytics or PWIC or any of the other hundreds of types of analytics software out there, what you should be using is free. 
the pay for versions, the ones that you may find when you're doing your little Google searches that cost anywhere between twenty to a thousand dollars a month, they are for more robust, important sites. So if you're running CNN.com, uh, you need better analytics software than Google Analytics. Google Analytics is fine, but of course it's free, it's not going to do everything that you need done. So you might use one of the, the subscription services and pay, again, twenty dollars to $1,000 per month to really understand what your, your customers are doing on your site. This is not something that you should worry about. What you should worry about is the free stuff. So now that you understand the, the basic definitions of bounce rate and all that, the next portion that we're going to go into is the information that you are given about the visitors that come to your website. Now most of these pieces of web analytics software can give you a lot of information about the, the people that are, that are visiting your website and, and taking a look around. Um, the first piece of information that is very, very useful that you can gain is the actual geography of where the person is coming from that's visiting your site. Now, when somebody goes to your website, there's a whole bunch of information that's passed, but your website can determine approximately where that person is located. So they, they can't get it down to the exact street number. They're not gonna say, you know, 578 94th Street. But they will say um, you had 20 visitors from, let's say, New York City, or you had 50 visitors from this place in, in some certain county. So you can get a very good idea of where people are coming to your site from. This can be very important. Uh, let's say if you have a store or a restaurant. So if you have those unique visitors numbers, um, and you're looking and you say, hey, look, I've got thousands and thousands of unique visitors. This is great. My website is doing wonderfully. Well, if you go to the geography section and you find out all, you know, all those thousands of visitors are coming from California and you're in New York City, that doesn't really help you out a whole lot. You know, you're, you're, people are coming to your site, obviously, but they're nobody that's going to turn into a customer for you. So this is something that you can look at and try to try to figure out what's going on. Why are people from California going to your website, but people from New York are not? You can get a lot of really good information from the geography feature on uh, the different types of web analytics software. When I was running uh, Eli the Computer Guy, the, the storefront, we saw we were able to see an actual line through the state where people were coming um, to our website. So we had a radius that we were trying to target for where we were trying to get our clients from. But in that radius, there was this big thick line that ran down the middle of it. And nobody, nobody was coming to our site from either side of it. So that showed me that if I wanted to do advertising, that that thick line is where people were interested in getting our services. They were the ones that were doing the search and trying to look for, for computer repair help. So looking at the geography can be very useful. The next thing that you can get, a uh, piece of information that you can get about your visitors, is how they themselves are using the internet. You can gain what type of web browser that they're using. You can find out information such as the type of Flash player or the type of Java that they're using in their web browser. That's for the, for the web programmers, but that can be very important. Uh, there are things such as screen resolution or internet speed. So you may want to come up with a really, really fancy site. And let's say you want to put videos on it, and you want music, and you want all these really cool things to happen. Well, if you use your web analytics software and you find out that most of your, uh, your visitors are using very, very slow connections, then if you put all of that stuff on your website, they're not going to be able to appreciate it because it's going to take too long to download. Uh, you're going to think, hey, I created this really beautiful, pretty website, but when they get to it, it'll take so long to download that they just kind of think it's kind of crappy because they, they can't use it very well. So that's one thing, one, one very important piece of information that you can get is what is the internet speed that people are using to get to your site. Uh, so if, again, if you're in the middle of New York City, you're probably dealing with almost everybody on very high speed internet. So you can put these wonderful flash graphics and music and boom, boom, bang and bling and all that kind of stuff. And people will be happy and people will be excited and you will be cool. 
But if you did that same website, I don't know, in the middle of uh, Oklahoma farm country, no offense to them, but the people that are there may not have the same internet speed. So when they go to your website, again, nothing really works right. It's just a pain in the butt and then they hate your website and they don't really like your company. Uh, the other thing that you can find out, which is kind of cool, uh, is the languages that people use uh, when they come to your website. So I don't know many people who really use this in the real world, but you can see, you know, are people that speak Chinese coming to your website or people that speak Finnish coming to your website. So if you're trying to uh, spread, let's say, your market share maybe into Europe, so maybe you're an import-export person and you're trying to get into Europe, you can see the different types of languages for the people that are coming to your website and then you may decide to customize uh, your website based on those languages. So like, let's say right now in the US, uh, a lot of Hispanic speakers. So if you're getting a lot of customers, you see a lot of your visitors, um, their, their main language is Spanish, then you may decide that it's a very good idea to come up with a, a Spanish version of your website. So if a Hispanic uh, Spanish speaker comes to your website, they can click on the Spanish version and then you'll get them as a customer. Whereas if it's just English, they may look at it and that you, you may get them as a customer or not. So those are the different types of information you can get about your visitors. You can get the geography, where they come from. You can get their browser capabilities, you know, their flash types, their screen resolutions, their internet speed, all that kind of stuff. And then you can get the language that, that they, they speak, which is very useful. Okay, well now you have all this fancy information about your visitors, but how did your visitors get to your website in the first place? You will have a section within your analytics software that says traffic sources. So traffic sources tells you how people came to your website. Uh, a few of the things um, that you'll see are, are fairly easy to understand. You'll see different websites uh, presented, and those are websites that have links to your website. So if somebody, if another website has a link to your website, a visitor clicks on that and it comes to your website, then you will see that in the traffic sources. You'll see direct traffic. Direct traffic, all that means is somebody actually spelled out www, let's say elithecomputerguy.com, and that's how they came to your website. They didn't use Google, they didn't go through any other um, websites, they, they actually typed out your web address into the address bar and then hit go to, to go to your site. On top, of, on top of just the normal website links and the direct traffic, you will also see Google and Yahoo and sometimes AOL and Bing and you'll see something that says organic. So what organic means is organic search traffic. So this is where somebody, let's say for Eli the computer guy, if they typed in Baltimore computer repair and in the normal list that, that Google pops up, not the advertising section, but just the, the, the normal search results, if they find me there and they, they click on that, that is an organic um, source of traffic. So if they do a search, you know, some weird article that, that I may have done a long time ago, let's say the, the best place to buy LCD laptop monitors, they might type that into Google, Google pops up, they see the little, my little blurb in the search results, they, they click on Eli the computer guy from there, that would be organic search traffic from Google. So you'll see that from Google, Yahoo, sometimes AOL, Bing, the whole nine yards. And that, that's what organic means. Now, on the traffic sources, depending on what type of analytic software that you're using, you will also see um, the advertising that brought uh, visitors to your website. So I use, like I say, Google Analytics. I also use Google AdWords to bring customers to my site. So those are the little advertisements along the side of um, you know, your search results or at, at the top. So if you type in Baltimore Computer Repair, and at the very top, those, those advertisements that, that are up there, if I was advertising on there and you click that, that would also be a different type of uh, traffic. And within Google Analytics, it separates that out. So I could see um, which ads were doing better uh, and a whole bunch of information uh, like that. So if you use 
Google AdWords with Google Analytics, you can get a lot of good information about how your advertising campaigns are working. Again, depending on the different types of analytics software that you're using, you may be able to, to get the same information from, let's say, Yahoo, uh, AdWords, whatever they call it, or Bing, or the, the same type of thing. So not only can you see you know, the direct traffic that comes in, the links from other websites, the organic searches, but you can also actually pinpoint the, the advertising that you're doing and seeing how, how people are coming to your website through advertising. So the next part uh, that we'll look at in your, your analytics software is the content section. So the content section is all about the, the information and the pages that are on your website. So within the content section, you'll see uh, the first thing will be landing pages and exit pages. Landing pages mean the, pa the first page that somebody comes to when they, they come to your website. Of course, the exit page is the last page they're on when they leave your website. Now, you may be surprised to find out that your the, the top landing page is not necessarily your home page. So maybe if a lot of people come to your website through uh, organic search traffic, they may come to a page that you would not have thought was going to be the first page that they would come to. So uh, let's say you did a report or a little write-up about something and maybe you didn't make it very pretty because you didn't really think anybody would ever care about it. Well, that may end up being the top landing page. So this little nothing page that you created uh, a while ago and just kind of put up on your website and didn't think anything about it, well, that may be your top landing page. And the reason you may not be getting calls on the phone is because you didn't do a very good job making that landing page look pretty. So when they get to that landing page, well, they don't really like what they see and so they leave. So your content section, again, can show you the landing pages and then the exit pages, where do people leave from? So uh, that, that can be very useful. It will also be able to show you what's called the navigation path. So you should be able to see that when somebody comes to whatever page, you know, whatever page it is, let's say your home page, you can see the navigation path. So it'll say, 50% of the people that go to your homepage leave. So 50% are exit. Well then 25% then go to your prices and 5% go to your contacts or you know whatever. So this can be very useful because it can show you, okay, all these people are coming to the homepage, so that's good. I've got a lot of people coming to the homepage. And then the next thing that they go to, the most important thing for your customers are prices or maybe they might go to hours or something else. But let's say in this instance, they go to prices. So they go from the homepage, they then go to prices. Well, then you see 99% of the people, that's the exit page. Everybody goes from home to prices and then they leave and then you don't get any calls. Well, it might be because your prices, people consider your prices too high. So you say, I have a lot of people coming to my home. Then the first thing, the, the thing that they're most worried about is prices. They go to the prices and then they leave. So this may tell you that you need to adjust your prices. You need to bring your prices down. Or again, maybe if you have a restaurant or some kind of boutique, maybe prices isn't what's important. Maybe they come to your homepage and then they go to your hours of operation. Maybe they go to the hours page and they look at it and then that's where you have a, a lot of people leave. And maybe because your hours are too short. Maybe you thought, hey, I only need to be, need to be open on the weekends. And then you find out, well, a lot of people want to shop during different times. So this can show you where your, your business may, may need some work. Within the content section, if, you're, if you created your website for profit, uh, let's say my, my current website, EliTheComputerGuy.com, which is a blog now, so it's no longer associated with a storefront business that would make money. Now it, it tries to make money it's on, it's on its own. So if you'll notice on the, on the side of EliTheComputerGuy.com, there are all those little Google advertisements. Well, in the content section of uh, Google Analytics, I can see my AdSense profit and I can also see which uh, Google or which, uh, which blog posts have made me the most money. 
So you can go in there, you go through the content section, and like my pages on digital surveillance, have surprisingly made more money than anything else. So I can look at that and say, hey, I need to write more blog posts about digital surveillance because that is what is actually making me the money. So depending on what analytic software you're using, you can actually see what pages or posts make you the most money um, on your website. The last thing that you can look at uh, on the content section is something called a site overlay. Uh, this can either be a good thing or a good tool or a bad tool depending on whether you're good with these kind of things. What the site overlay does is it brings up your website and then it graphically shows you um, how people are using your site. So it'll show you maybe the, the percentage of people that click on certain links on your site, just, just in a graphic uh, format. So before where you saw the, the navigation path, that, that, would, that would just be all, it would all be, uh, it wouldn't be very graphical. It would basically say people that go from the home page, there's a little arrow, 50% exit, 50% go to prices. The site overlay is a, is a very pretty graphical thing to, to, to try to give you that graphical representation of how people are, are actually using your site. This may or may not be useful for you, but, but it is, is there. So the important thing with content is you see your landing and exit pages. Remember your, your top landing page may not be what you expect and that might be causing you problems. Uh, your top exit pages may be showing you problems, not necessarily with the website, but maybe with your overall business. Like I say, if the top exit page is prices and you don't get any phone calls, maybe your prices are too high. If your top exit page is your hours of operation, maybe you don't have a wide enough set of hours of operation. You can see the navigation path, how people actually go through your website. You can see your AdSense profit or any other average, types of advertising that you sell. You can see which uh, pages or posts make the most money for you. And then the final part is the site overlay. Again, is that that graphical overlay of, of how people use your site. Now the, the final section of, again, almost all uh, web analytics uh, software is the goal section. So you can tell your web analytics what goal that you're looking for. So let's say you're trying to get people to contact you for more information about your product. So you can, you can program in a goal that says, I want to know how many people click the contact me tab and fill it out. And so in this section of your, your web analytics software, um, that's where those type of things will pop up. So let's say you have a few goals. You say, I want to know how many people, you know, click the little contact us form, actually fill it out. I want to know how many people print uh, the coupon that we have. So let's say you have some, some coupon to, to come to your, your restaurant or your store. Well, your goal is to see how many people actually print that coupon. You know, things like that. So that will be in your goal section. So it'll say, all the other information aside, what is important to you is people printing out, let's say, the coupon. So it'll say, you know, 50 people printed out the coupon or 25 people submitted the, the contact uh, form, something like that. That is the goal section. So now that we've gone over the functionality of the web analytics software, this last part is a little bit of a friendly advice for me. The first thing is if you don't know what piece of web analytics software to use, start out with Google Analytics. It is a very, very good piece of analytics software that'll give you almost everything that you need. Uh, the only drawback I find with it is it's not real time, so I do have to wait a day to get all the, the up-to-date stats, but that's not too bad. Every other part of it gives you the information that you need to know as, as a web administrator. So if you have a small business and you're not sure what to use, just use Google Analytics. It's free, it's relatively easy to set up, it's easy to use, and it's, it's just, it's good. The next thing is set up your uh, web analytics as soon as possible. You want your web analytics running, well, as soon as possible. 
The reason for this is too many people decide that they're going to, when they start a marketing campaign, that they're also going to start the web analytics when they start that marketing campaign. Well, you want a baseline of the traffic. You want to understand on a normal day, before you're doing advertising, before you're doing anything else, how people are coming to your site, what they're doing on the site, yada, yada, yada. You want a good baseline of how people are using your website already. One, this, uh, this may tell you uh, what type of marketing campaign that you should be doing. You may find some nugget of information in there that's useful. So that's always good. But two, it also really shows you if your new marketing campaign is doing what you think it should. It's surprising how many websites do much better than the website owners realize. So you may have a website that's already doing very, very well. Well, you decide to do a marketing campaign and with this marketing campaign, you only do a little bit better. You do a tiny bit better. Well, if you start the analytics software right when you start the marketing campaign, all you're going to see is that you're hitting all your goals. Yay, the, the marketing campaign is working. Well, if you saw that you were already doing pretty well before the marketing campaign started, and then you only got a little bit of benefit, you may realize that the new marketing campaign really isn't, isn't, isn't worth that much. So all, you, know, you would have been meeting your goals even if the marketing campaign didn't exist. The other thing uh, is especially when your website is new or you're not getting a lot of traffic to your website, always remember to account for your own activity to the website. So with those total visitor numbers, with page views, with time on site, if you're not getting 1,000 hits per day or 200 hits per day, your, your own visits to your website could horribly skew your information. So I've seen this when I've done a lot of editing to my website. My web stats, stats go through the roof. The, you know, the time on site's high, the, the number of page views is high. All of that's very high. Well, the reason it's high is because I've been on my site a lot doing a lot of different things. So everything that I'm doing also gets recorded. So just remember that your own traffic can really skew the results. Now with EliTheComputerGuy.com being a blog, and I'm trying to get people from all over the country and world, hopefully, to come to my website, I just normally take out all the traffic from Baltimore, the Baltimore area. So I, every single visitor that comes from Baltimore, I discount. I just assume that they don't really exist. I assume that all the visitors from Baltimore are actually me. So uh, it's, it's not a perfect system, but it, makes it so I, I don't uh, overestimate how much traffic or, or how good my results are. So that's what you should keep in mind is Google Analytics is the best uh, software you can use when you're starting out. It's just very good. You may go to something at the end of, you know, down the road, uh, but to start out with Google Analytics, it's very good. It's free, easy to use, yada, yada, yada. Set up your Google, Google, uh, your Google Analytics or whatever analytics software as soon as possible as of now or tomorrow. Uh, you want that running, again, as soon as possible so you start to get that baseline of information. Because remember, it takes time to gather this information. You know, if you want a month's worth of records, well, it, your analytics need to be up for a month. Um, so. And then uh, finally, remember to account for your own activity because especially with small websites, if you're not getting you know, at least 500 hits per day, your own traffic to your website can horribly skew your results and you think you're doing a whole lot better than you really are because, well, you're, you're your, own, uh, your, your own best customer. So that was a class on uh, web analytics and web analytics software. So web analytics uh, are the reports that web analytics software give you. Now, every decent pay piece of web analytics software will give you these reports and very nice fancy graphs and tables and all that. So they're relatively easy to use. If you own a business, but you're, you're not the one that, that controls or looks at your web analytics um, every day or every other day, you should ask for a report at least once a month in printed format, it doesn't have to be digital, to show you what your web analytics look like. So if, if you've outsourced your web marketing to, to some web marketing company, then at least every month, and 
maybe every week, require that they send you a PDF of whatever analytic software is being used and you can go through and, and, and see if the information looks good to you. Um, once the information is given to you in a graphic form, then you as a business owner can have a pretty good idea if your website is, is doing what you need it to do. Like I say, is if you're a restaurant owner and you look and you see that the average time on site is five seconds, you can go, oh, that makes sense, you know, because people are coming to look at my website for the hours of operation. They would only need five seconds. Whereas if you're a blog owner or if you're an owner of a little newspaper website and you see five seconds, for you, you'll realize that's a really bad thing because you know, if people are only spending five seconds on your website, then they're, what are they doing? It's not very good. Another thing to realize is that you don't have to only use one piece of analytic software. For my, my website, EliTheComputerGuy.com, I use three pieces of analytic software because different pieces of analytic software do things better and they also pre present things uh, in ways that are easier to understand. So like I say, I use Google Analytics and that, that's the core, that, that's what I make decisions off of. So when I'm trying to make a decision on what I'm going to do next with my website, I look at Google Analytics. But on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I look at another type of analytics software actually called WordPress Stats because that type of analytics software is more concerned about the posts that are read. So it doesn't worry about time on site, it doesn't really worry about where visitors came from or any of that stuff. It simply tracks the number of times any single post has been read. So I can use that piece of software and very easily see what my most popular posts are. So instead of wading through all the Google Analytics information, I can go to this one piece of analytics software and go, oh, my blog post on you know, web marketing is very popular, so maybe I'll, I'll do a follow-up to that. You know, it's very easy to look at. It doesn't give a lot of information, but it, but it gives the type of information that I need. Or I use another piece of software called What's Up, uh, pretty cool, that is very, very good at real-time analytics. Why this is important for me is I use uh, different types of web marketing. And so as soon as I submit my information to these different types of web marketing venues, this real-time piece of software can show up to the second how people are coming to the site. So I can literally sit there and watch this map as the, the globe spins around and see, okay, I submitted you know, this, this blog post to this web marketing venue and once it went there, then as soon as that happened and somebody in Washington State saw it and somebody in Canada saw it. And, then, and so you get an idea of of how things work in, in, in real time. So that's, that's very useful. So just remember that you don't, have, um, you don't have to only use one piece of web analytics software and depending on what you're doing and what information you're looking for, it may be easier to use one, two, three, four, or even 10 pieces of analytics software that, that tell you different things. So I hope you learned a lot with this class. Um, web analytics software is very, very important if, if you have a website. Your website is one of the only places uh, in advertising when, where you can get good information. I mean, I know I did billboards, I did radio advertising, I did newspaper advertising. And, and what, what were the results? If I wanted to know the real time uh, results of my newspaper advertising, nobody could give it to me. You know, I, they would say, well, 50,000 people receive the newspaper. But I can't see how many people even saw my ad, so 50,000 people perceived it, but how many people saw the ad, how many people went to the website. There's no way to understand that. With websites and with web analytics, you know. You can say, I can see how many people came to my site, I can see how long they stayed here, I can see if, if my goals were completed, you know, did, did people print out the coupons, etc. All of that information is presented in a nice, neat, easy format, and, and it's, it's just a wonderful thing. So I hope you like this class on web analytics, and uh, I'll see you around.